Hey everyone, I'm back after a brief hiatus from uploading because I had a big commercial photo job I had to work on and then I went on vacation for a little bit. Alright, so I know I'm a little late on the cyberpunk trend now, six months after the cyberpunk 2077 game was released with absolutely no controversy whatsoever and everyone was making cyberpunk art. But in fairness, I did first create this image several months ago, it's just I've only just now gotten around to doing a breakdown video of it. This will be a fairly quick one, but I hope you enjoy it and get inspired. Be sure to stick around to the very end of this video where I'll show you a grungy painted version of this piece I recently made that came out pretty awesome. Alright, let's get started. So to get started, I needed to find a stock image of buildings that had a somewhat futuristic look and were photographed from the ultra low angle needed to fit with the shot of the man in the trench coat who's going to be the focal point of this image. It took a while, but I did manage to find this photo and it worked just fine. I added a little haze over the buildings to blend them into the background a bit so they didn't take too much focus away from the main figure once I added him to the scene. I found this bridge stock image. It's not all that futuristic looking, but it was at the right angle and I'll add some elements to it in a bit that'll make it look more sci-fi. I clipped an adjustment layer to that to lower its contrast some, and then I added the main figure. So I came across this stock image on DeviantArt one day while I was looking for something else and it sparked the idea for this image. I thought the low angle would be a super unique perspective for a cyberpunk noir kind of scene. I clipped a few adjustment layers to the figure to blend him into the scene better, and next I created a pillar holding up the bridge by making a couple of solid shapes on a separate layer. I added this shape behind the figure just to ground him a little bit so he didn't look like he was just kind of floating there. I couldn't find a stock image of a drone that had the look I was going for and was taken from the correct angle, so I used this image I found of some kind of sci-fi ship and used that as the body of the drone. Then I added propellers from a different image and darkened them down to match the rest of it, and added motion blur to the blades so that the drone looks as if it was actually hovering there and not just frozen in midair. Now, since I wanted this to be a nighttime scene, I added a color lookup adjustment that switches day to night by darkening the image and adding a blue tint. Next I searched for stock images of advertisements that look like they would fit in a futuristic setting. I ended up combining a couple of images together and transformed the perspective to fit on this building, then added some effects to make it look like it was a lit up hologram. To further make this look like a futuristic cyberpunk city for our character to walk through, I began adding lights to the scene. First I added some red lights to the building on the right. I wanted there to be a light shining up into the sky from the roof, so I added a beam shining up and a glow around the base of that. Then I put a blue light along the bridge and some blue lights going up the side of the building on the left. Then I added some pinkish lights on the building in the back. All these lights were made by simply drawing on blank layers with a white brush and adding inner and outer glows in the layer styles dialog box with different colors. Now to add some lights to the drone, I first put lights on the engines then added a glow to that. I thought it would tell more of a story if I added a spotlight coming from the drone shining onto the figure. Like what if our character was a detective in this futuristic metropolis and was wrongly blamed for a crime and this is one of many drones sent out to search for him. Building on this idea, I searched and found a stock image of a gun that was at close to the right angle. I still had to warp its perspective just a little to make it fit in the extreme angle, but it worked. And I darkened it down a little with an adjustment layer, then extended the index finger so it actually went around the trigger. I wanted the gun to look more futuristic, so I added a light to it. I thought this series of lines could maybe be like a magazine round counter or a fingerprint reader. I don't know, something, just as long as it looks futuristic. I added a red glow to the gun barrel so it looked as if it was just fired, adding more mystery to the story the image is telling. Next, I added outline reflections to the character coming from the lights on the buildings. Then, light reflections from the drone spotlight then reflections on the drone from the building lights. To add more atmosphere, I added some haze around the scene, making sure that the haze reflected the color of the lights around it. Then, to make the futuristic cyberpunk scene even more atmospheric, I searched for stock of rain. Again, this took some doing as it needed to be from a low angle and on a black background so that it would be easy to blend into the scene. But I did manage to find something that worked. Here I used Camera Raw just to add a little punch to the image. Then on a blank layer with the default brush I painted some splashes of rain bouncing off the gun. And just cause it's a cyberpunk cliche and I thought it would look cool, I added the glowing line of some kind of bionic implant on his face. 
Lastly, I found this bright area at the bottom right of the image a little distracting, so I just darkened that down real quick. And now this is where I initially stopped when I created this image. I was happy with it and thought it looked great just like this. However, as I tend to do when I came back to this image after some time, I started to play with it some more to see what else I could do with it. I wanted to see how it would look as a more traditional concept art piece. So after some photo bashing and overpainting and tweaking the colors, this is what I came up with. I really like both versions. I like how clean and vibrant the original version looks, but I also like the grunginess of the messy brush strokes and the more muted color palette of the second version. Let me know which version you prefer in the comments. Thanks for watching this video, and thank you to everyone who's been watching and subscribing. It's taken a little while, but I'm finally starting to see some real growth on this channel. If you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when I upload a new video, which I try to do every week. Let's keep growing this channel together.